Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today what I'd like to get to is, I'd love to show you one really simple exercise to help treat hip impingement. And it's a really powerful exercise. So please hang around towards the end of the video because it's something that if you are struggling with hip impingement that you will hopefully get a lot of benefit from. Um, but before we get to that, I just wanted to talk about sort of how we view hip impingement at the moment. So as a physical therapist, I think the way that we look at and treat hip impingement in terms of what we think cause it and how we go about trying to fix it, uh, sometimes misses the mark in terms of what's actually going on there. And it can be easy for the general public or people who don't necessarily know too much about hip impingement to be working really hard on a set of exercises uh, in the hope that it's gonna do some wonderful things, but ultimately sort of left disappointed that it hasn't done what they've expected them to do. So hopefully by the end of this video, you'll sort of understand why that is. <clears throat> so I think one of the most important things to understand about hip impingement, for those who don't know, is that we look at hip impingement as the, the ball and socket joint of the hip that sort of fit, uh, fit together nicely. The bony aspects of the socket really fit around the, the head of that femur really well. And it's supposed to move and roll, slide and glide really well uh, at all times. But what we tend to find with hip impingement is we start to see some jamming up and some catching that happens and we can start to see wear and tear through the hip joint itself. We can get sort of irritation, pain uh, and all this dysfunction that can tend to accumulate because the function of the hip deteriorates. And what we can see a lot um, with hip impingement is that the, the ball itself, so the head of the femur, can start to sort of develop like a bony notch or a bony bump that can really start to bang into the socket, start to create some wear that way. Or from the opposite perspective, we can see the lip or the cup that the ball sits in start to wear a little bit and start to sort of grind away on that, um, that head of the femur as well. But the ultimate, I guess, consequence of hip impingement is it can jam up and irritate some structures, but long term, we think that it might be one of those things that may lead to some arthritis and some joint sort of degradation over time. And I think one of the points that I wanted to make a big emphasis on, or make a big emphasis of uh, in this video, is that we often think that the bony bump and maybe some of the dysfunction with the cup itself that can lead, lead to this impingement and catching, we often think that this is a, just a thing that happens over time or something that you might be born with. And it may be true for a, a percentage of people, but from my experiences, it may not necessarily be true for everyone. And I think it's an important conversation to have because um, one of the, I guess, the, the plan B options for hip impingement is surgery. And hip surgery can be a big deal. Um, it's, it's obviously, it takes a bit to get in there. You're going through a lot of structures to get to that hip joint. And when we're trying to sort of debride or to clean up that wear and tear or try and shave down some of the dysfunction, if we're not necessarily looking at this from a bigger, broader mechanical perspective, and looking at the things that maybe potentially cause those changes to occur, having hip surgery alone may not necessarily fix the problem forever. It may restore a lot more normal motion for a long period of time, and some people may never have problems again, but we're still missing the bigger picture of potentially why that happens. And I guess before we get to the, the, the exercise that will hopefully um, counteract a lot of this, we want to talk about what that consequence uh, sort of derives from. So. One of the things that I see a lot with hip impingement is the hip joint capsule. So we've got the ball and the socket joint that go together nicely. Most joints in the body are wrapped in this really thick, dense, connective tissue called a capsule. Um, and it basically um, encapsulates everything, but it also, I guess, has a stability or a role in stabilizing the hip joint as well. So when you externally rotate the hip, it almost sort of winds that capsule up to make it nice and, nice and strong. And then when you internally rotate that hip, it sort of takes the tension out of that and creates a less stable joint. And this is really important because thanks to the modern living, and this is probably the biggest thing to take away from the video, hopefully, is that sitting and sitting-based activities play a huge role in stiffening up that hip joint capsule. Um, when we're sitting in the same position all day, and also sitting on the back of the hip a lot, or sitting on the underneath section of the hip, we can create this, um, this laminate effect. We can also toughen up those structures. And the fact that we're not moving the hip past that full range of motion, past that point into full range of motion, means that over time, we can start to lose some of that uh, end range of motion and, and not be able to express that when we want to because all the structures around that become stiff. 
And the reason why that's really important is that if you are a young kid, as soon as you get to school, we, we're forced to sit a lot. We sit all day at school, then we have to sit down and do homework. Uh, you know, if, you, if you're playing video games, if you're watching TV, if you're reading a book, you're doing homework, whatever it is, you're you know, traveling to and from wherever you need to go, it can be really easy to accrue a lot of time sitting, stiffening up that hip joint. And then why we see this a lot in athletes, particularly you know, dynamic athletes, younger athletes, and even those as we get a little bit older, we then take that stiffness into activity and try and express full range of motion, full function with a handbrake on. So instead of that hip being able to move and express itself in all directions, in all capacities as it should, we're all of a sudden dealing with a hip that's a little bit stiffer and tighter. So the ability for that hip to express itself in certain ranges becomes diminished. And we sort of increase the chance of being able to grind that, that joint away, create some bony osteophytes or whatever it might be that starts to accrue and maybe start to wear down that joint. So the point I wanted to make here is that it's often that hip joint capsule stiffness which tends to lead to a lot of hip impingements and it's not addressed nearly enough when we treat it. So we can give people a lot of hip strength exercises, we can massage all the hip muscles, we can talk about good movement habits, we can inject things, we can you know, operate on things as well. But unless we're trying to produce exercises that sort of uh, improve the quality of the range of motion relating to that hip capsule, then we're potentially not solving the problem. So, so the exercise today that we want to get to hopefully helps solve that problem. Um, so we'll get to that in a second. So, um, so I just wanted to make that hopefully uh, that point clear where sitting relates to hip stiffening, the capsule getting stiffer, and then it compromises the way that hip joint moves. So we need to make that hip joint move better. So everything around it, everything more superficial to that, like the musculature and the tissue can function more normally. So the exercise that we want to get to is a hip joint capsule stretch. Now, <clears throat> a really great way to do this is with a band. So we'll do it without the band to start with because you don't need it specifically. <clears throat> but how this looks for a lot of people is that we want to make sure that you're on your hands and knees. And I'm going to do this hip, and we want to take that the opposite leg back as far as you feel comfortable, but we're going to put some pressure through this hip. So if you do have hip impingement, and it's worthwhile noting here that true hip impingement is generally felt in terms of groin pain. So if you have pain on the outside of your hip, uh, we've gone through this in another video, but there's every chance that that type of hip pain might be coming from your lower back. So again, if it's true hip impingement or you know, FAI, femoral acetabular impingement, <clears throat> we probably would expect you to feel that more in the groin area. So if you feel that at any point during the stretch, then we need to modify it so you don't feel that. So it's not good enough to get that groin pain or any hip pain at all. So, so basically how that looks, so coming back to this position again, is the idea of the exercise is we want to imagine that we're going to press the thigh bone out the back corner of the hip. So not so much the back where the back pocket is, but more the corner, so the outside corner of that hip. <clears throat> and the, the essence of this exercise is keeping your trunk parallel to the ground. So we're going to gently sort of bring your whole body across over that, that knee, the outside knee. And what you can do here is you can drop down deeper into that, so more hip flexion or less hip flexion, depending on where you feel the best access to your tightness is. And you should feel a pressure here. You may not feel a tightness, you may, but we want to find some a pressure feeling on the outside of this hip. Now, if you feel like the, I guess you get some discomfort inside the hip or relatively to, to where the groin is, then basically come out of that position. So don't get into as much hip flexion so you're not at risk or as at risk of jamming up that hip. So, so the purpose of this is we're not trying to dump the hip to the side and rotate through your spine. We're trying to shift everything across, so you're going over your outside hand, over your outside knee, and we're trying to feel like you're pressing out the side of that hip, and we want to stay here. And one of the things we want to do here is we want to hang out here for about 30 seconds to a minute, and we want to make sure we then bias internal rotation. So the internal rotation of the hip is often quite limited in people whose hips jam up with impingement. So we want to put your hip in as much internal rotation as you feel comfortable with, stretch it in that position, then increase it a little bit more and more and more as you start to open up some more range. So how that looks is that you take your outside foot, just basically rotate everything out, not far enough so that you feel like your back starts to twist as well. Everything stays nice and still, you just come out as far as you feel comfortable, 
and then we just repeat the exercise. So we come back over that knee again, and this time, instead of feeling it towards the, I guess more towards the bum, you might feel it more towards the side, and that's okay. As long as it's not the groin, again, if it is, then just come out of that a little bit. If you need to get into it deeper, you're welcome to drop down as deep as you feel comfortable, as long as this foot stays out. And we just wanna hang out here for, again, 30 seconds, two minutes, as long as you feel you need to, to start to open up that hip range. Uh, and the third piece of this, which we can explore, is more external rotation. So it, all it is is just twisting your, your foot underneath, dropping your back leg down to block it, and then repeating the same thing again. So coming back across, it can come over the top of it a bit more or down a little bit more, depending on where you feel you need it. But the point is that you want to go hunting for a gentle piece of pressure through here to the point where you feel like it's actually doing something. Now what you should find is immediately after doing that, that hip should feel like it has more range of motion to play with. It should be instant, you shouldn't have to wait for it, you shouldn't have to guess, you should see that straight away. <clears throat> and how that works with the band basically, is that all we need to do is have the band all the way up into that hip. And ideally we want the band pointing straight towards the camera here, but it's off to the side a little bit. But it's the same thing, so foot goes out, shift your body across, and then find a position that you feel gives you good access to that tightness or that pressure, and we want to stay here for 30 seconds to two minutes. And it's such a really, really fantastic stretch, as I said before, that it should make an immediate difference. So, so if you are someone who has some groin pain um, from FAO, from that impingement, what I'd, what I'd ask you to do and how to structure this is, you'll know there'll be uh, a certain exercise or a certain activity that generates that pain for you, it might be something like squats, it might be getting out of bed, it can be you're getting, uh, going up and down stairs, it can be anything specifically, but if you know what that is, do that first to get a, an idea of how your pain feels. Take a couple of minutes to do this stretch, do that exact activity again, and you should see a change. It should make your hip move better and will hopefully help your symptoms long term. So, because we want to avoid as much surgery as possible, if you have developed a bony spur or an osteophyte that's just compromising the function of your joint through you know, sitting and stiffening that hip up and all those sorts of things, then again, we can't necessarily suggest that you may not need surgery to change that. But having said that, it doesn't necessarily guarantee that you have to have it. So if you keep freeing up your range of motion and all of a sudden your symptoms start to subside and the function of your hip gets better, then you might find that you're all of a sudden creating more space in that hip where any of that dysfunction that might have been there before doesn't have an impact. And it may mean that the legacy or the consequences of a, of a lifetime up until that point of developing that dysfunction, it may mean that you have to keep doing some stretching intermittently just to maintain some good function in that hip to avoid surgery, then so be it. But uh, I don't want you to feel like you have to jump to something surgical um, when if you can optimize the function of that hip, you might find that it's good enough and you can have a full you know, existence without necessarily worrying about degrading that hip or wearing it down over time. So, uh, so I think that's just something I wanted to touch on with you know, hip impingements. Um, it's still something I think that we, as a collective industry, may not necessarily be grasping 100% just yet. Um, we're great at rehabbing it, of course, um, but it's something I think that in terms of the cause of it and the, I guess, the explanation of why it happens, I think it's something that we're not necessarily promoting as much as we could because we've got a lot more control over it than I guess people realize. So, so if you do have hip impingement, there's every chance your hip is very stiff. Um, so it might take a bit of time to make some genuine long-term change. But every single time you do that exercise, the hip joint exercise, you should see some progress. It should feel loose straight away. If you can then manage the amount of sitting that you do or how long you're sitting or how bad you sit in or what position you sit in, then you should find that it just gradually gets better and better and better and better and better. So um, hopefully that helps um, explain a few things for you guys. Uh, so if you enjoyed the video, we'd really appreciate it if you could leave a like below. Uh, and if you do enjoy the content as a whole, you know, please consider subscribing. It really helps support the channel, but also helps these videos reach more people. Um, unfortunately, YouTube's algorithm uh, demands that we sort of have that interaction in order for this to, um, to get out to more people. So I would appreciate it if you could consider doing that. Um, but uh, until next time, we'll see you soon.